Hello, I'm Mrs. Charity. Welcome to the Glorious Heritage Overview of Catholic Church History. Discover the amazing story of the Church together as a family as you color and paste your way through the timeline and printables, which you can find on our website. And now, let's move into our topic for today. Hello, I'm Mr. Charity, and welcome to the Glorious Heritage Catholic History video series. Today's topic is number 147, St. John Bosco. If you look on your timeline and summary question sheets, you'll notice that we are in the blue time period which we have named Taken Away. If you don't have a timeline or summary question sheets, you can find them on our website. Do you remember, in the last couple videos, particularly about the video of Pope Leo XIII, I told you about something called the Industrial Revolution. Let us step back for a moment and also remember the aftermath of the French Revolution and what it did to Europe. If you recall, the French Revolution led Catholics to turn away from the Catholic Church and from focusing on heaven, and instead it spread the idea throughout Europe that people should trust science and inventions. Another way to understand it is that the French Revolution spread the idea that mankind should trust itself instead of trusting in God. This notion was like a virus that did so much damage to the souls of poor people in the Western world. With this new emphasis on science and inventions, many new machines were created. These machines made it possible for the Industrial Revolution to change the whole way in which society was structured. In the mid-1800s, large factories were built throughout Europe to produce all kinds of things, and these factories needed workers. The rich men who owned the factories did not pay much money to their workers, and also the working conditions were dangerous in the factories. Even children were forced to work in the factories to earn enough money for their families to survive. Many people died in these factories because of their dangerous working conditions. In a city in northern Italy named Turin, the Industrial Revolution was exceptionally strong. The death of many adults and the poor living conditions caused many young children to be orphaned. These poor boys and girls lived on the streets of Turin, trying to make a living any way they could, often turning to crime in order to get money. Near Turin, in northern Italy, a little boy named John Bosco was born in 1815. This boy wanted to be a priest, but his mother needed him to stay in home and work on the farm to grow enough food to live. But in time, John was ordained a priest, serving God and the church in the city of Turin. Now while in Turin, this St. John Bosco, or Don Bosco, saw the way in which the large factories of Turin caused so much poverty and misery. He particularly noticed the orphan boys who lived on the streets like animals. Their souls hardened and blackened due to the life of crime they led and the cynicism that festered in their hearts. He resolved to help them. In 1859, St. John Bosco founded the Congregation of St. Francis de Sales, otherwise known as the Salesian Order, in order to help the poor boys of Turin. He also founded an oratory, which was land and buildings that the orphans could live, learn trades and professions, and most importantly, learn their faith and to live a life of virtue. He was a loving father to the boys, having patience and compassion, telling them jokes and performing many tricks and acrobatic feats to keep their attention. He saved so many young boys from a life on the streets, but more importantly, he saved their souls from eternal damnation. You might already know one of the boys from the oratory. If you know about St. Dominic Savio, then you probably know that he was St. John Bosco's best student. St. John Bosco is also known for his prophetic dreams. Many times he would have dreams that came true or warned him of dangers to come. Now his most famous dream, probably, was of a boat that represented the church. On the boat was the Pope, who steered the boat during a violent storm. In this dream, after being tossed and turned by the storm, 
the boat came upon two pillars, which anchored itself in order to survive the violent storm. On top of one pillar was Our Lady, and on top of the other pillar was the Blessed Sacrament. Now it's important to remember that the deplorable condition of society in Turin in the 1800s was a direct or indirect result of the changes in Europe that were brought about by the French Revolution. Instead of a continent devoted to God in the Church, the French Revolution created a new Europe in which God and His Church were marginalized and ignored by the new atheistic and Freemasonic governments. Nonetheless, God raised up great saints like St. John Bosco to give us an example of true Christian charity and devotion. He shone like a bright star in a dark world. Now Mrs. Charity will tell you about the time in which St. John Bosco was saved by his mysterious heavenly dog named Grigio. Hello, St. John Bosco was helping so many young boys, you would think he would have been well liked, but this is not true. Can you believe that there were many men in the Italian government who wanted to kill St. John Bosco? One time, the saint was walking in a back alley back to his oratory when two of his enemies approached him with weapons. As they came close to St. John Bosco to harm him, a large gray dog appeared, scaring the men away. St. John Bosco knew this dog was sent by God, for he appeared at just the right time on several occasions to protect him. St. John Bosco named him Grigio, which means gray one. Welcome back. Now I can tell you another story about St. John Bosco. It was a chilly evening in Turin, and St. John Bosco had just finished evening prayers with the boys at his oratory. He looked around at their faces, feeling a deep sense of responsibility for them. The boys, many of whom were orphans and street kids, relied on him for food and shelter and education. But today, St. John had a heavy heart. For weeks, he had been buying bread from the local baker on credit to feed the boys. The bill had grown very large, and the baker, although he was kind, insisted on St. John giving him the money for the bread. Father Bosco, the baker had said, I need the money by tomorrow. I can't keep on extending credit and giving you bread for free. That night, St. John Bosco prayed earnestly, asking God for help. He didn't know how he was going to get the money to pay the bill, but he trusted that God would provide. The next day, as St. John Bosco was teaching the boys, there was a knock at his door. A wealthy man who had heard of St. John's work stood there. I have heard about your noble efforts, Don Bosco, the benefactor said, holding a big pile of money in his hand. I hope this can help. St. John Bosco looked at the money astonished. He counted it, and the amount was exactly what he needed to pay the baker. The benefactor, the wealthy man, had no idea about the bill that St. John had to pay. So God had provided just at the right moment by sending a rich man to give money to St. John. With a heart full of gratitude, St. John paid the baker and continued his work with renewed fervor. He knew that God was watching over him and the boys, ensuring they had what they needed. This incident became a cherished story, a testament to God's providence and St. John Bosco's unwavering trust in him. Well, that's all for today. Come back next time and we'll talk about the first diocese in America, the Archdiocese of Baltimore. I hope you enjoyed and learned something new today. Visit our website, www.GloriousHeritageCartoons.com, where you can find more educational supplements, cartoons, books, and printables. You can also follow us on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram to get notified of our latest updates and videos. And if you like our work and want to support us, you can make a donation on our website or on Patreon. We really appreciate your generosity and kindness. Please don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to our channel, and see you next time.